This space is only 11 and a half inches wide by 12 and a half inches high, but still somehow the prisoner managed to get her entire body through here and attack the deputy. A handful of Chatham County's 480 registered offenders have not been assigned a reoffense risk level yet, but their crimes are often just as serious. Oh, Casey and Jennifer, in one word, magnificent. We're down here at City Market outside Vinnie Van Gogh's, and while the crowd is not as big as it was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or even yesterday, it's still pretty strong. Businesses have told me they're still seeing that post St. Patrick's Day bump. But yet, if you look at downtown Savannah, the tour buses are packed, the restaurants always seem busy, even at the Lady and Sons, which is behind us. We hear reports of people lining up there at 7:30 in the morning to go and eat. These tornadoes have knocked over a lot of trees throughout the areas they came through, but few can demonstrate the storm's power just as much as this huge one. If you look, I'm about five foot ten, and I reach my hand all the way up. Don't even come close to the tree's severed top. Many of the boats docked at the lake were damaged, but that is not the worst of it. If you look all the way across the street in these woods, the pier from the lake thrown into the trees. Savannah Tech's welding program will train students to match the requirements of businesses in the area. The program has grown so popular, enrollment has doubled. Now Jonas March was in the National Guard, but was doing contract work in the country when he was detained here in Mahmoudia, which is about 20 miles south of Baghdad. We are just days away from National Signing Day, when thousands of high schoolers will decide where to continue their athletic and academic careers. One thing Southside Fire does plan to do is buy remote locks for their ambulances, because right now you can't keep the engine running and the door locked at the same time. We got that verdict guilty for Alex Cowart and John Andrew Adams on several counts, the most serious of those being felony murder. Casey, I'm live here on the Tybee Pier Pavilion where we heard through an online petition that a peaceful protest was scheduled to talk about Orange Crush and to protest against Orange Crush. We haven't seen any indication that that's actually taken place. Step into Savannah Tech's welding class and you hear the sound of building. Not just materials, careers. Emily Fitzgerald was drawn by more than the hands-on learning. We're not sitting in the classroom doing tedious book work. We're learning stuff hands-on, and that's, that's what I love. There's such a demand for welders right now that there's no reason why I shouldn't do it. We cannot graduate students fast enough to keep it into industry. Places like Mitsubishi, Gulfstream, and JCB need these skilled laborers, but good luck finding them. The average age of the welder now is anywhere from 60 to 65 years old. They're retiring. We need new welders, train new welders to take their places. Savannah Tech's welding program will train students to match the requirements of businesses in the area. The program's grown so popular, enrollment has doubled. Still not enough people choose this field or other trade industries. That's where Go Build Georgia hopes to come in, spotlighting how easy it is to land a high paying job with just a few semesters of schooling. Ask a student about to graduate how his job search is going. Um, actually, I already have a job. I hooked up with the uh, local 709 iron workers out in Pooler. So, I mean, it's pretty good. I already have a job before I even graduate. Just goes to show, put in the work and the job is there. Lately, J.N. Mize is afraid to leave her porch. Snakes, poisonous ones, are a common sight for her and her neighbors on Van Nuys Boulevard. Local animal control doesn't deal with snakes, so we called Brian Nettles with Cold Blood Adventures. Even in the midday heat, that's a big one. It doesn't take long to find four copperheads. Definitely, definitely a, a bad case of uh, snake infestation. When I go hunting, when I go snake hunting as a hobby out in the woods, I normally don't find this many snakes in that amount of time. Turns out Mize has a food chain in her backyard. Lizards love eating these roaches. The snakes settle in and feast. He's very fat. He's a very fat copperhead, so he's getting a lot of food around here. Yeah. Uh, and that's why he's hanging around. I really didn't think he was going to find what he found. I was flabbergasted. He found four snakes in my backyard in 20 minutes. With the canal and woods behind the house, snakes will always be an issue, but it shouldn't be this bad. Nettle says these folks made their yards too inviting. Pretty much anywhere where there's um, lots of places for them to hide and you want to make it where they're uncomfortable. You don't want to give them a food source. Even unraked piles of leaves can provide cover, especially for copperheads which blend in easily. Mize's husband will find plenty of chores when he gets home. Well, first things first, I'm getting rid of all this wood. <laughs> all this wood's going away. My husband, the pack rat, can pack it up and throw it away now. Right, drop them in there. As for the snakes, Nettles will put them deep in the woods where they shouldn't run into people anytime soon. We're just going to head up there. 
We tried to talk to Rochelle Smaltoni to see if Chief Willie Lovett really was under a gag order prohibiting him from talking to us, the media, about city business. This was as far as we got. Hold on. Can you stop it just for a sec? Not sure. Tell me what's going on here. <laughs> well, we want to talk to her about everything that happened yesterday. Right. With the, regarding the police chief. So then we went to the mayor's office to get his reaction, but he wasn't around. We were told the mayor would be at the Oglethorpe Mall for a ribbon cutting, so we went there. He wasn't here either, but we did find his second in command. What did you think of the mayor muzzling uh, the police chief yesterday at council? I'm not going to answer that question at this point. Why is that? will not address it because I'm here for one sole purpose, and that is the opening of the store. Okay. So if we turn around and do it in 15 minutes? Anytime you're dealing with an issue that involves the health, the wellness, or welfare of police officers, the chief of police has a sworn duty, which is higher than that of his responsibility to the manager. Longtime chief and county commissioner David Gellatly was more than willing to talk to us. You've got to be some kind of a dumbass to go ahead and, uh, uh, with the media sitting there saying you're going to fire the chief and you've been city manager for three months and that chief of police has been sitting there for 35 years. As for the gag order, well, the city says that's all been a miscommunication. Jerry Shellnut was at the corner of Broughton and Bull this morning when a Metro police officer opened fire on a silver Jaguar and the armed gunman inside. His instincts took over. You hear the gunshots, you don't stick around to see what's going on. You know, you just come back later. He took off running down an alley. Before he knew it, another man was running with him. Shellnut couldn't believe who it was. I looked over at his eyes, he looked pretty scared, and I looked down, and he had a pistol in his hand, and yeah, that's when I took off running another, another way. Shellnut says the gunman turned a corner, eventually ending up holed up in the old pink house. Police quickly locked the entire area down. Before I knew it, there was SWAT and Metro Police and FBI everywhere, and well, my, my car's parked in the parking garage, can't get out, and I'm just kind of waiting to see what happens at this point. Scary. Amazing. It's a lot of police in here. It's a 2015 cars maybe in here. Henry's restaurant on Drayton Street, just 360 feet from the pink house, was shut down, just like every other building nearby. But not before officers removed one very important patron, Mayor Edna Jackson. She's stuck in here and the police escort her go to the job. Luckily, this is fine. After a tense three hours, the standoff ended with the suspect in custody, no one injured, and at least one man thanking his lucky stars. That guy could have taken out a witness right there. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that, most definitely. You know, that's the first thing that popped in my mind, you know, that when I seen the pistol, you know, if he freaks out, you know, I might be the next one. Oh, yeah, I feel real lucky. Bullets hurt. <laughs>